As we've talked about, cells are selectively permeable. The, specifically, the plasma membrane of cells is selectively permeable, allowing certain things in and not others. And a lot of this is dictated by gated channels. These are channels that are closed during certain times and open during others. So these gated channels require some sort of mechanism or key to unlock that door to allow things to come in. Now, to be clear, there are channels within cells that are not gated and that are always open. These are oftentimes referred to as leakage channels. So there are sodium leakage channels and potassium leakage channels that just little let a bit of those ions in constantly somewhat like a dripping faucet but what we're going to talk about here are the types of channels that have gates or doors to them that are closed during certain times and open during other times so there are three types of gated channels we're going to talk about. Ligand gated channels, often pronounced ligand gated, voltage gated channels, and mechanically gated channels. Ligand gated channels are channels that open when some sort of signaling molecule or chemical binds to the gate, opening up the gate. A voltage gated channel is when the channel opens due to a change in voltage of the cell and a mechanically gated channel opens when there's some sort of physical force that actually pushes or pulls that gate open. So let's take a look at the ligand gated channels. In all of these examples, we are going to start with the cell at rest at negative 70 millivolts. Just a reminder, high concentration of sodium outside of the cell, low concentration of sodium inside of the cell. And what we see right here is a gate that is impeding sodium movement into the cell. So if we're using this example with sodium, we could identify this ligand gated channel even more specifically and call it a ligand gated sodium channel. And what that means is that once that gate is open, sodium can move down its electrochemical gradient into the cell. But for sodium to be able to do that, that gate needs to be open. And it's going to require some sort of signaling molecule to open up that gate. And so what we see here with this ligand gated channel is some ligand has bound to that gate to open up the gate. The gate's open. Sodium's going to move into the cell. Nothing, nobody, no stimulus is required to get sodium to move in because it's naturally going to move down its electrochemical gradient. But certainly something needs to open up that gate and it's going to be this signaling molecule. It could be a hormone. It could be a neurotransmitter. If we use the example of acetylcholine, acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter that binds to ligand gated channels on skeletal muscle. So when the acetylcholine binds to the channel, it opens up the channel. One thing I want to stress with this image right here, or this process, is the ligand is not moving through the channel. The ligand is never moving through the channel. The ligand is merely the key that unlocks that door, that opens up the gate. Okay, so that's a ligand gated channel. There are a litany of ligands in our body, hormones, neurotransmitters, things known as paracrines and autocrines, quite a variety of different types of signaling molecules. By and large, ions are not functioning as these signaling entities. There are cases with myocardial contractile cells well, cal where calcium does move into the cell, binding to the sarcoplasmic reticulum, opening up again on the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And in that case, calcium is functioning as a signaling entity. I'm not calling it a molecule because calcium is not a molecule. And don't worry about that process with the myocardial contractile cells. I just want to highlight it's rare for the ion to be functioning as a signaling entity to activate a gate. Generally, it's a hormone or a neurotransmitter or some other signaling molecule.
So once that sodium comes in, the ligand dissipates, disappears, and that gate closes. So what we see here is that the influx of sodium depolarized the cell. It made the cell positive. Keep in mind, we started at the resting state of negative 70 millivolts. We are now up to positive 30. And certainly for a depolarized cell, it doesn't have to be all the way up to positive 30. It could be positive 5 millivolts, and that's certainly depolarized. Or even we could say if the cell is at negative 40 millivolts, it's on the trajectory towards depolarization. Not technically depolarized, but it's no longer at its resting state. But here we are after the ligand gated channel open and then closed because when the ligand's not bound to it anymore, the gate closes and the cell is depolarized. Something else needs to happen to repolarize the cell to get it back to its resting state. And we will highlight that in a subsequent video. Another thing I want to point out with all of these gated channels, when they open and close, it is due to some sort of conformational change of that protein channel. We talked about conformational changes, which just is a change in shape or morphology of that protein, in this case, the protein channel. So the binding of the ligand causes a conformational change, which opens the gate, and the release of the ligand causes a conformational change returns it back to its original conformation. Okay, here we're gonna talk about voltage-gated channels. Now, I'm gonna tell you from the get-go here, this is going to be a little bit confusing because there's some information I'm gonna leave out of this and we will talk about in another video. But this gate is closed, resting state of negative 70 millivolts. When that gate opens, I should say, when there's a change in voltage, that gate is going to open. What I'm not going to explain to you now is what causes the change in voltage. We're going to save that for later. But if there is a change in voltage, that gate is going to open. And here I also have a different ion. I don't have sodium. So we don't, we're not always dealing with the influx of sodium. Here we're going to deal with calcium, and that's common with voltage-gated channels. And keep in mind, we've already learned the different milliequivalents per liter of the ions, and calcium has a huge chemical gradient favoring it to move into the cell, actually an electrochemical gradient, because the positive charge on calcium is attracted to the negative interior of the cell. So like I said, a change in voltage is going to open up this gate, and that's what we see right here. It just went from negative 70 millivolts to positive 30 millivolts. Once again, don't worry about what caused it to change at this point. But the change in voltage opens up the gate. The change in voltage is going to induce a conformational change in that channel protein, resulting in the opening of the gate. Calcium will then move down its electrochemical gradients into the cell. We see these voltage-gated channels in a number of places in the body. We see them in neurons, where a change in voltage is going to allow the propagation of the electrical potential from one end of the neuron to the another end of the neuron. We also see it in skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle, among other places. So this is going to be a frequent theme throughout this explanation throughout this expose of human physiology, voltage-gated channels. Now, it this can be a little bit confusing because we see positive 30 millivolts here and you would think that would open. Gates tend to open and close. They don't stay open very long. It's actually a very fleeting moment, but enough time for that cation, in this case calcium, to move into the cell. And then eventually this is going to repolarize. Okay, let's move on to mechanically gated channels. Calcium, high concentration outside, low concentration inside. We're at the resting state of negative 70 millivolts. The gate is closed. A mechanically gated channel is where there's some sort of physical change or impact on that cell and specifically on that channel. So for example, there will be gated channels on the smooth muscles of blood vessels. 
and let me rephrase that, there's going to be gated channels on the smooth muscle cells that make up the lining of blood vessels. If the blood vessel is experiencing, that region of the body is experiencing elevated blood pressure, which we don't necessarily want in certain areas of the body, or really any areas of the body, the elevated blood pressure is going to cause this gate to open. Calcium will rush, rush into the cell, cause the smooth muscles to contract, cause vasoconstriction of the blood vessel, and inhibit excess blood flow to that area. Don't worry about those details, but just understand some physical force, pressure, or manipulation is going to open up that channel. And so here we see the opening of the channel. Now, if you recall the channel previously in the resting state was kind of wide and short. And now this channel is narrow and tall. And don't worry about the wide and short and narrow and tall, but I'm trying to demonstrate that there's a physical change within that protein. And I actually would not even call this a conformational change because it is just physically pulling or manipulating that protein channel, which results in the opening of the gate. And then with the opening of the gate, we're going to get the movement of calcium down its electrochemical gradient. So as we proceed through these videos, what I'm outlining right now are the very basic principles that remain firm throughout the different body systems that we're going to talk about. If we can understand every all these principles that I'm laying upon each other, then the subsequent topics of specific body systems are going to be more simplified. So we talked about gradients here. We talked about electrochemical gradients. We talked about a resting state of the cell, the excited state, all of that related to these gated channels. And then, of course, once that gated channel has opened, it closes because these gates stay open very briefly. We have this depolarized cell, which downstream something has to happen to return this back to its resting state.